Paratron blasts the mine, that's when we attack. Here's the beam. Stand by, men, any minute now. Fifteen thousand. Give it more juice. Of this top level. You're not getting the stuff out fast enough. Put the men on a double shift. Do we get a bonus? You're getting too much overtime already. Don't mind him, you'll get your bonus. Follow me quick. Up this ladder. I know it was so quick. I heard the shots fired and then somebody hit me from behind. When I came to, the shaft house was inflamed and Dr. Miller was lying beside me, unconscious. So I brought him in here. Joe, we better get him upstairs. Trusted men, too. Kessel. Bosner, are you sure? Why, I saw it with my own eyes. Then this must be the man who attacked Dr. Miller and myself. Well, sit back and make yourself comfortable. Now tell us all about it. Might as well talk, Kessel. Who's behind this? Who sent you here? Who's paying you? Come on, start singing before I work on you again. Why'd you do that? He wanted to kill me. I, I lost my head. I'm all confused. I, I don't know anymore what I'm doing. Oh. Pop, there's your man that's been working from the inside. Well, it's about time. Kessel. Why?
looked like House did his stuff. This ought to be easy. Huh? That's them high binders again. Come on, man! Get a couple of rifles. They're out of the telephone. You must take it inside. Shoot it in the outlaw. I'll leave it where it was. I said this is going to be easy. I had a hunch House would bungle this deal. the last of this gang. I hope so, but we better make sure. Well, boys, the smokes are on me. Light your own cigarettes. And get back to work. What do you think this is, a birthday party? I'm sorry you wouldn't let me use a paraton on them. That's too bad. Maybe you better go outside and see if they got them all. Members of this gang still around. Sooner or later, they'll be back. I agree with you, Doc. I think you should take the Paratron and return to the States. And I shall accompany the doctor, of course. Certainly, Dr. Hawks. Well, fine. I'll load the Paratron on the station wagon and get things ready for you. Thank you, Jim. You know, Doc, for your sake, I'm glad you're gone. But it's going to be awful quiet around here. <laughs> Want to relieve us immediately. You are to drive me to town with the Paraton. Dr. Miller will follow in the other car. All right, check and see if we got everything. Sorry to have kept you gentlemen waiting. See you later, Bolson. Stop the car. <laughs> Put that thing away. You could kill a guy with that. Stop this car.
the bonuses. Well, what happened to you? You were supposed to go out into town. Well, he pulled a gun on me. Well, it wasn't quite according to plan, was it? You know, that might work out even better. Does he know we're following him? I don't think he suspects a thing. Well, get in. Did you have to come straight to my office after that showdown at the mine? Where should I have gone? Never mind. The thing now is to get you and that prayer train out of town fast before the Hudsons come looking for it. So, this is what I spent all those weeks trying to get, is it? Let's have a look at it. You stupid imbecile! went into Brock's office. I can't understand it. What's so strange about that? Well, I don't see how Brock could be involved. He's the most respected man in town. Did you expect him to be wearing a stormtrooper's uniform? Well, hardly, but we've got to be sure. Look, Ruth, Brock's secretary knows me, but she doesn't know you. Why don't you go in there and ask her if Dr. House is with Brock? Will you do that? Why not? I came into town with Dr. House. He told me to meet him here. I see. Well, he's in with Mr. Brock just now. Shall I tell him you're here? Oh, no, don't bother. I, I have some shopping to do anyway. I'll drop back later. Thank you. Yes? Miss Miller was looking for Dr. House. How do you know it was Miss Miller? From Brandon's description of her. Did you tell her House was here? Yes. How long ago? Just now. Well, it becomes clearer every minute. You've walked into a beautiful little trap. What are we to do? Brandon and his men are Shut gone. Shut up! Nobody left but us. Deputy Marshal's office, please. Why did you call the Marshal? You're mad. Hello. Marshal? This is Brock speaking. There's a troublemaker on his way here to annoy me. I'd like to have you take care of him for me. You will? Thank you. Uh, I guess that'll take care of the Hudson's. I don't see how. They've suffered serious losses lately. Trucks, buildings, planes. They've become involved with a dangerous maniac named Miller, who has an inferno machine, killing and destroying them. Do the Marsha believe that? In this town, people believe what I tell them and do what I say. Well, he isn't the first big shot who's a fascist at heart. There's one sure way of finding out. Come on, Bosun. We should be leaving town, not sitting here, waiting. To leave town now would be the worst possible thing we could do. I want to see Brock. He's in conference now. You'll have to wait. I've waited long enough. Hold on, Jim. What's got into you? I want to see Brock. Yeah, that's what he told me. Maybe you better come with us and simmer down. I'm not going with anybody till I see Brock. Oh, hello, Jim. Glad to see you. There's your man, Marshal. That one? Of course. He came in here and tried to sell me an invention he'd stolen from Dr. Miller and the Hudsons. I got wise and arranged this little meeting. Drunk. No. You don't believe him, do you? Not quite. I think you must have had a pretty good reason to believe that Mr. Brock would even be interested. Well, just the other day, your own father sent this man to me with a letter of introduction. Traitor. Shot is too easy for him. In my country, he would have suffered for this card. Take him out of here and lock him up. What's it all about? Why don't somebody tell me something? This man's a spy. What? He's in the pay of the enemy. So is Brock and his whole gang. You'll find out about it soon enough. Go on, get him out of here. So I'm not angry. I'm, I'm just peeved. Because you didn't tell me you were suspicious of House. Oh, so you're the one woman in the world who can keep a cigarette up. Huh? I am. What, for instance? The date I've set for our wedding. For instance. Suppose the marshal told you to hold me as a material witness. Material witness? Yes. 
I don't know anything about the witness. But if you ask me, babe, you're certainly good material. <laughs> <laughs>